We talked about the great Kanto earthquake last time. Jiro Horikoshi meets a guy named Honjo at Tokyo University. This character appears throughout the story. He's Jiro's best friend and also his rival. His role in the story is very important, like Jigen Daisuke in Rupan the Third. This character Honjo is based on a real life figure with the unusual name of Kiro Honjo. Together with Jiro, who designed the bomber Mitsubishi G4M, he brought the Japanese aviation industry up to an international standard in the pre war era. He was considered a genius. Honjo stood out even more in Hayao Miyazaki's first draft of The Wind Rises. This was going to be Miyazaki's first buddy film. Miyazaki wanted to write a story about two men who go on a journey together. Honjo's character originally corresponded to Jiminy Cricket. That's why it was a buddy film. So who is Jiminy Cricket? This is the first episode of Kikaida by Shotaro Ishinomori. The professor is determined to design a robot with a good heart, a robot who will never obey bad orders. So he creates a circuit of conscience. He says he'll name it Gemini. Why did he call this good-hearted robot Gemini, which means binary stars? Kikaida is based on Pinocchio. In the very last scene of the last episode, there's a line that goes, was Pinocchio really happy to become a human? It is a story about a wooden doll who worked hard and tried desperately to acquire a human heart. Kikaida is based on the Disney version of Pinocchio. In the Disney version, Pinocchio was granted the right to become human by a goddess, but he can't distinguish between right and wrong. So Jiminy Cricket, who is actually a cricket, serves as his guide. Jiminy Cricket teaches the newly born Pinocchio, who doesn't know what's good and what's bad, what he can or can't do. Jiro is a genius, but although he knows the basics of right and wrong, he doesn't understand the complexities of good and evil. Jiro doesn't speak his mind. In fact, he hardly talks at all. So, in Miyazaki's first draft, he has Hanjo asking Jiro, Do you think this is right? Or does this make sense to you? In order to uncover the causes of the war. Hanjo was the Jiminy Cricket. And Jiro was depicted as an enigmatic man. Honjo was always the one asking Jiro questions and starting a heated debate, whereas Jiro was depicted as a man of few words and he would assume that he was thinking his own thoughts. In other words, Jiro was the Naushka and Honjo was the Kushana. Naushka's action is based on her simple sense of justice, while Kushana questions her on the feasibility of her plans. Kushana is realistic and says to Naushka that they might not be able to survive. That was his role. So Miyazaki had this buddy movie idea in his mind at an early stage. This is when Honjo appears for the first time. The library of Tokyo University is on fire as a result of the earthquake. The books are burning. He's working hard trying to save the books from the fire when he suddenly takes a break and sits down to smoke a cigarette. He can be erratic and impulsive.
This is two years later in a canteen in Tokyo University. They're eating lunch. He scolds Jiro, who always orders mackerel, saying, We are living in the Juralumen world. You should eat tofu and beef like the rest of us. Instead of saying, Eat steak, he says, Tofu and beef, because they were poor and that was all they could afford. Later on in the film, when Honjo actually sees the Junkers G38 covered with Juralumen, he freaks out. This scene is linked to that. Honjo always reminds Jiro what is happening in the world around them. He reflects society. That is his role. Jiro, on the other hand, is fascinated by the curved bone of the mackerel. He picks up the bone with his chopsticks and goes to his classroom to trace the bone. He places the bone underneath a paper and traces it with his pencil. He tracks the curve beautifully. Jiro is excited and says, Honjo, check this out! You can find the same curve as this mackerel in the Naka model. At first I was confused when I saw this scene in the movie theater. But then I saw the storyboard and I finally understood. Naka stands for National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics in the US. Naka is the predecessor of NASA. Until it became NASA in 1958, it was an institution for developing aviation technology. The most famous facility of NACA was the Langley Research Center. This center had a state-of-the-art wind tunnel. It could generate a wind with the speed of sound. The center sought to perfect the wings, surface, and shape of aircrafts. It also released monthly reports, and in them, Jiro finds a wing surface model that embodies the exact same curve as the mackerel bone. Jiro does the calculation himself, figuring out the bone's vertex and curvature. The model was the result of an experiment carried out in the wind tunnel. Later on, Naka became NASA, and the wind tunnel at the Langley Research Center became a supersonic speed wind tunnel. This was also used for Project Mercury, the wind tunnels that we see in films like The Right Stuff and Hidden Figures were both wind tunnels in Langley, so they are all connected. By the way, later in his life, Honjo develops the first high-speed wind tunnel in Japan. What a coincidence. And later in the film, we see a cool aircraft called Kyushi Single Seat Fighter Plane. Honjo places the model of this plane in the wind tunnel designed by himself and calculates its maximum speed, which is 240 knots. But Jiro doesn't accept this result. He thinks it's unrealistic. So he submits his original data to the Navy. But when they actually fly the plane, it really reaches 240 knots. Then he knows that the wind tunnel designed by Honjo is credible and apologizes to him. The wind rose. In the very last scene, the QC single seat fighter plane flies at 240 knots, and Kurokawa says, This can't be real! So, everything in this world is connected, and there's never a dull moment. So, I hope you'll enjoy my lecture. After the mackerel incident, Jiro graduates from Tokyo University as the top student and is hired by a company making internal combustion engines, which is now the Mitsubishi Aircraft Corporation. He goes to Nagoya to make airplanes. During his journey, he notices people walking along the railroad track, a large crowd of people. But when a train approaches, they all run away. When Jiro asks Honjo who they are, he tells him that they are all on their way to the cities to look for work. 
So you see, Jiro basically knows nothing. He doesn't know what's going on in the world. Honjo is smarter, and he tells Jiro everything. Who are they? They are the unemployed. What are they doing? They're all going to the bank. Honjo is the Jiminy Cricket. Most citizens cannot afford to go on a train, so they walk for days to get to Nagoya. But the two take a taxi to work. The company pays. From the taxi, Jiro sees a swarm of people outside a bank trying to withdraw money. There is a bank run and everybody is rushing to the bank, but his eyes are as cold as glass without expression. He watches a woman desperately trying to take out her money. He doesn't understand why all these people are so desperate. This is two years after the great Kanto earthquake. The banks issued the draft for the companies to reconstruct their buildings, but many companies couldn't meet the repayment date, which was two years after the earthquake. The companies were optimistic at first, but ultimately they couldn't pay, and this is what triggered what we call the Great Showa Depression. The companies went bankrupt, one after another. Fearing default, people rushed to the banks to withdraw their funds, and the economy got even worse. Unlike the people on the streets, Jiro is very relaxed in his taxi. He stares blankly outside and says, Oh, they look so desperate. I think this is the keynote of this scene. If the government had done something to stimulate employment after the earthquake, this crisis might not have happened. But instead, the Japanese government was trying to expand its military power to invade other countries, and this was the result. So, Honjo knows that it is his duty to explain what is happening to Jiro. Honjo thinks that Japan is trying to be a leading country and that this hardship is necessary to make that leap. He wants to make Japan great by making airplanes. He believes that enhancing military strength will make Japan wealthy. But Jiro is not thinking about this. This dialogue reminds us of Jiminy Cricket. Honjo's character is necessary to highlight Jiro as a psychopath who is only interested in planes.